Blessings. Meeting your idols is cool. Performing in front of your idols is cooler. But having a conversation with someone that you've been following, someone that's been inspiring and motivating you for years, and sharing a moment with them, it's a different feeling. Bless the game. It's Dre. You feel me? Now look, I dropped the performance video because I wanted you guys to just get a feel of the performance y'all performed. For those who haven't seen it, um, you need to go check it out. But a few of you guys were asking for the performance video, so I made sure to drop that footage for you guys before I drop this full-length recap. Now, in this recap, I'm not finna reshow the performance, so if you want to see the performance, again, go watch that video. Make sure you drop a like before I even get into the story. Let's get into it. So before I even get into that night, I want to talk about what led up to the show, right? How I even got the opportunity, etc. I'm going to keep it a beam. I don't want to sound cocky, braggadocious, etc. However, my name holds weight in the underground scene in the city, right? I know I've been known of Ali Reza, shout out Ali Reza, and Rapture Mind as a whole. I've known of them for years. They've been putting on crazy shows and events in the city for a minute. I went to a couple of them myself so I can attest that they'd be lit. I knew it was lit beforehand. I DM him randomly on IG. I think I seen a post or something. DM him, say, hey man, I love what you and Rapture Mind do, something along those lines. I'd love to be a part of a show. He doesn't respond at first when I DM him, but he goes and he checks out my music, immediately shoots me a DM back and is like, hey bro, I really want you to perform. Say less. Another day in the office, I'm finna go rock out that stage. That's my natural born duty. Just like a cheetah was gonna hunt his prey, I'm finna kill this stage. Simple as that for real. So I'm super excited before anything even goes down. He briefly mentions the Pierre show and we just stay in contact beforehand. So me and him are texting back and forth here and there. About a week before the show, he finally hits me and is like, hey, it's time for that Pierre show. I need you to sell X amount of tickets. Anytime I have to sell tickets or bring people out, one of two things always happens. Either niggas buy my tickets immediately when I drop them, especially when they're cheap and it's for a party or something. But nine times out of 10, when it's for a show, niggas are going to buy those tickets last second right before the event and because i knew it was a club i knew <laughs> niggas was gonna be niggas and wait to the last second to buy a ticket so on my mind when he tells me a week before i'm like oh i'm right in that gray area where some niggas that are smart are gonna buy that ticket and most niggas are gonna wait to the end but i'm praying that i'm not gonna niggas ain't gonna be niggas but <laughs> Long story short, niggas was niggas. And right before the show, the night before actually, me and Ali Reza are chopping up having a convo. And he keeps it a bean with me, tells me straight at flat, yo, bro, you might not be able to perform. You only sold four tickets. The man's not wrong. <laughs> Who would want who's coming to see me? <laughs> my dad, my mother, my cousins. Like that's that's about it. Nigga, like <laughs> four tickets. But I had to explain to him, bro, like, I invited niggas. Niggas are going to wait to the last second to buy tickets. In fact, I know at least 30 or 40 people of mine are going to buy tickets at the door. But you won't be able to know that because it won't reflect on my ticket selling account. They'll just buy it at the door and my people are being here. Lo and behold, an hour before the show, four hours before the show, I reached my ticket count. And then I really reached it because a hell of a amount of my people Bought their tickets at the door, like I said, spending $30, $40 at the door when the tickets was 15. I don't understand, niggas. I don't understand the logic, but hey, they was there to support. <laughs> I ain't finna knock it, you feel me? But um, yeah, it got to a point where Ellie Reza was like, I can't let you not perform, so send me your songs. I'm performing, it's time to go. Niggas start getting dressed, um, planning out the night. Mind you, I'm not driving out there myself. I'm riding with my homeboy, Curly, because if I'm being honest with you, I planned on getting drunk or faded, to be honest with you. I did not. <laughs> I didn't plan on coming back to the crib sober. Or... No, I wanted to be nice and flowing after the performance. I really did. I wanted to enjoy my night. Bro, I'm performing for Pierre. I got to get lit, bro. It's almost mandatory, right? So Curly comes to school. 
on the way there. It's nothing but immaculate vibes. Let me check our time real quick. We only six minutes. Curly comes to pick me up. We sliding out that way. Some Mackie La vibes. Gas in the air, you know what I'm saying? Curly's driving. He brought his homeboy, Taylor. So me and Taylor drinking a little bit. And we just having a... We vibing, bro. We vibing before we get there. Cooling. We get there. Park the car. Some of my homies are already there. So we hop out the whip. So as we walk, we see more of our homeboys. We chopping it up. Dabbing people up, bro. Just... We know the night's finna be a vibe, right? Before I walk in... I walk in, security sees me, they're like, oh, that's under it. The, the, the security workers were African. Some of them were African, some of them were white. They don't even dab me up, bro. I just, I had a drink in my hand. Put my drink down, bro. They don't even pat me up. They said, go ahead, open the thing for me, for another lane for me to walk in. I said, oh, man, a Mac. In my head, I'm playing, I'm out on the outside, I'm playing the cool, of course. In my head, I'm, yo, immaculate feeling. Bro, it's in the, let me let my dress down. Hair was getting tight, bro. And I feel like I look bald headed. <laughs> when I got my dress back and the light on or whatever, we looking like my, you know what I'm saying? I ain't got no hairline. <laughs> no bullshit. But, um, bro, yeah, it was an, an immaculate feeling, bro. An immaculate feeling to just walk straight through security. They ain't no touch, no press, no nothing. They know who I am. They know what I'm here to do. Like, I'm like, okay, yeah, y'all yeah, know I'm that nigga. All right, bet. I'm sure finna act like it. Walks right through. Dapped up Alley Reza, my homeboy start pouring in. We all vibing, chopping it up. It's finna be a vibe, bro. So mind you, we get there. Mind you, we get there super early, right? Nobody's there at the club. It's a club in Houston. The club don't be jumping till 12. We there at 10. So as the time goes on, more of my people just walking in. And it's looking like a straight Andre show right now. Like, I'm dapping people up. I'm just chopping it up. I'm talking to people I ain't seen in a minute. Like, I know it's finna be, it's finna be a vibe, bro. Closer to 11, I get a phone call from Clover Boy, one of my homies, my music homies, shout out Clover, and he's like, hey, bro, security tripping at the door. So I'm start running outside. As I'm running, Ali Reza takes me, hey, yo, people tripping. I ain't gonna lie, in retrospect, that does sound kind of racist, <laughs> but I know that's not what he, <laughs> what he meant for real. But it does kind of the tad bit. But he wasn't lying, my people was outside tripping. I ain't gonna lie to you, to an extent. So you walk outside, get out there and basically the whole dispute was a security told clover and polo another one of our music homies that they were out of dress code when in react actuality that wasn't the case a group of white fellows white gentlemen had walked in in front of them and they had on worse fits that were very similar to theirs so i was like okay all of us was like mm. you feel me it's kind of iffy so they disputing it ali rez is kind of like not trying to go back and forth and i don't blame him because he has to, a show to run tonight so he ali rez goes back in the building the owner comes out though the owner's this african dude and he looks a lot more understanding about the situation as a whole so as soon as i saw him i knew he was gonna let them in the club but by that time polo was inebriated and already angry because he kind of got profiled i'm not gonna lie to you they kind of hit him with the racial card i ain't gonna cap so he kind of all right i'm saying already mad so polo get to talking a lot of the a lot of, you know what I'm saying? A lot of shit to everybody, like, cooking niggas. I ain't gonna lie. Polo was definitely cooking niggas. It was funny. I was trying not to laugh. So the owner just get fed up, and the owner tell him, like, I ain't gonna lie. Y'all gotta slide. Like, y'all gotta leave. Kept it a bean with him. I dap up Polo. Polo a real nigga, bro. He he played his role. He just calmed. He calmed, uh, not Polo. Clover. Clover a real nigga, bro. Clover calmed down Polo. Gave, Clover gave me some dap and said, hey, bro, we have a good night. Enjoy your show. Uh, thank you for inviting me out. Um... Shout out Clover, bro. Cause for real, shout out Clover. Cause he he really could have made a big deal about that, but he really he really showed love right there. Like he she showed me the person, uh, like the type of nigga he was in the situation. I really appreciate him for that. Shout out Clover though. Um, walk back in after that, bro, and I'm like, damn, I'm apologizing to the owner and shit. Cause at the end of the day, like whether or not they meant for that to happen, that still reflects on me. So I want to apologize to the owner. So I did that. Me and him was just laughing about the situation, bro. He wasn't even tripping on it, bro. He said, I exp the owner was telling me he experienced that all the time. And I'm sure you do. We live in Houston. It's downtown. It's nothing but crackheads and creeps outside right now. I'm pretty sure you be dealing with the weirdest of the weird when it comes to this shit. Um, so I walk back in, bro, and I'm dapping up security again. Now, when I walk in, mind you, I've been outside for like 15, 20 minutes. So when I walk back in... The club kind of fake jumping. It's probably like a little bit over 100 people. Majority of people there are my people, but I'm seeing some unfamiliar faces. So I'm like, okay, cool. Pinning that craziest thing, bro. I'm going to leave your IG right here. Y'all give bro a follow. He makes beats. He found me on Threads. I was promoting the show on the Threads app. 
He found one of my posts on threads, said, where is the shit in Houston, bro? Send me the Addy. And bro slid off threads. Shout out Zuck, bro, for real. Maybe Zuck doing something right. But also shout out bro right here. So he, I, I remember walking back in from the Clover situation. Bro dabbed me up. I'm like, oh shit, what's good? Yada, 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 bro, this girl. You know what I'm saying? So... I immediately walked to the stage Because at this point it's 11 They telling me I need to perform The DJ pushed back 20 more minutes So shit more people walking in Now the club getting fake jumping So I'm like alright bet Like VIP kind of filling up the, the dance floor kind of filling up I'm like okay for surely Like it's that time And sure enough it is Shout out to the DJ He uh calls me up to the stage My nigga's that bro I swear to God I feel like I'm walking out uh, 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 I'm walking out one of the game tunnels, bro. And I'm, Le I'm LeBron. And some everybody dabbed me up. I'm walking towards the stage. My niggas dabbing me up, telling me go get them. You know what I'm saying we we all getting hype. In my head, I'm praying before I hit the stage. I always pray before I touch the stage. I'm praying, getting ready, mm, and getting in that mode for real. You feel me? Because I'm finna another day at the office, but I gotta bring that energy. Cause people in here don't know me And for those that don't know me They finna hear this song And be like Oh this nigga is too hard And he got the energy He's going crazy Really how I gained The majority of my fans From shows I'm no bullshit Hit that stage bro They play hold on shorty I get to wild And vibing out Having fun I remember I jumped off stage Just to get close to my people And turn up with them We all catching the vibe bro The performance goes well The crowd was really rocking With my song bro Man I love seeing people's reaction to my music. I really do. But seeing them from the stage felt kind of surreal because how high that stage was and just seeing all those faces look up at me, bro. So I get off stage. As I'm getting off stage, the homies dapping me up. My homegirls dapping me up. The females was in the crowd giving me looks like, oh, shit. This cute ass nigga just killed the stage and did his thing. Like, who is that? They say, oh, I'm getting stares. You feel me? So I'm feeling like that. Oh, I'm feeling like him. I'm feeling like himmy him. You dig? So, of course, I hop off the stage, chop it up with my homeboys, and I immediately hop on females because I know they, you know <laughs> I had to abuse my power in the moment. I ain't gonna lie. I had to abuse my power for real. So I started, you know what I'm saying, mixing, mingling. And it's getting later on in the night, so the club started getting jumping. So people just pouring in at this point. Like, it went from five people walking in at a time to 10 to 15. And I was just people constantly walking in, walking in, walking in, walking in, walking in. So it's getting jumping. Pierre is not there yet. So Pierre didn't actually get to see me perform, which is heartbreaking for real. But some of his homeboys did. Keep that in mind. All right, so boom. Night's getting deeper. And my boy Jay, my cameraman that records the performance, hits me and he's like, hey, bro, let's shoot a music video. So literally in the middle of the club, I'm shooting a music video. I will drop that footage for not even going to say the song. I get off the stage, bro. I'm chopping it up with everybody. It's a vibe. I'm shooting a music video. And literally in death smack in the middle of the club, all the white girls, oh, what happened in the video? You <laughs> like, know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> they all been in the video, bro. It's a vibe. Like I'm actually, I'm thoroughly enjoying myself, like to the fullest at this point. Closer to 12:30 ish, I see like people walking in from the back. They're VIP. If you're on the left side of VIP and you want to go to the right side of VIP, the DJ booth is in the middle, so you can just walk behind the DJ and get there. So I see people walking behind the DJ, and at first I see Chark, then I see some more of their homeboys, and then I see Pierre himself. And I'm like, oh, yes, sir. But I ain't finna fan out right now, bro. Just walked in. I'm not I'm not gonna fan out regardless. Like, that's kind of, eh, it's kind of lame. I gotta play my role, bro. So it's literally as soon as I see, as soon as I see uh, Pierre walk in, I immediately just, you know what I'm saying, kind of wheeze my way over to where they are. So by the time bro performs, I'm right there next to him on stage. So as he's walking in, he's dapping people up. I'm saying everybody get they dab. He talks to Ali Reza for a little bit, and then he goes sit down and roll some gas. So I'm still up there. And they say he's been finna go on. I'm still up in VIP, and they say he's about to go on in like five minutes. Bro gets up, smokes a little bit of his gas, passes to his homie. He walks towards the stage. He's finna do his thing. So I walk around, like I said earlier, so I can get closer to kind of be where they are, where he is performing. Bro starts out and immediately plays like songs he produced. I've heard Magnolia live before, bro. But just to see, again, the crowd's faces, so many people in the crowd singing the song word for word to you. So many faces singing the song, a moment that you capture with your bro. When I tell you, like, that was just the first song. And that's not even a song that's his, bro. But still, like, 
I, I cannot express to you I can't even express you how it feels because I didn't feel it. I only felt it because I only got a chance to see it through his eyes because I was there while he was performing, bro. When he performed Drunk and Nasty, everybody is singing his hook, his verse, etc., word for word, right back to him. I'm seeing how the song is resonating with the people, how much they love it, bro. And all I can do is soak in this moment, capture it, and my desire to recreate it myself starts to burn bro like i've always had this vision of me rocking out rolling out or a crazy crowd but but actually seeing it myself what it looks like as the artist it just seared the image in my head and it showed me how close i was because i was no longer in the crowd like another supporter or fan i was upstage looking at these niggas talking to his homeboys laughing with them while he's going crazy on stage Yo, like, it was nothing but a crazy feeling, bro. I got to keep it a band. It was an insane feeling. And it showed me, like I said, it showed me just how close I was to the top, bro. He gets done. He has a crazy set, bro. His set was crazy. He gets done. He hops off stage. And first thing the, the bro does is grab some gas. <laughs> and he sits back down. I talked to his homeboy. It was a jeweler up there, too. I, start, I talked to him. I don't got the brand for no diamond chain, broski, but I'm sure finna act like it and get you. I'm saying, come, come through my shop. He, he, you know what I'm saying? He's Arabian. He come through my shop. I got you. We chopping it up. He giving me game. I'm like, hey, bro, I ain't gonna lie. I don't have a bread for you at all. <laughs> I'm gonna waste your time for a while. I can see your story, bro. I'm not ready like that for no diamond chain, but he he, he laughing with me because I'm, I'm just cracking jokes and shit. He laughing and whatnot. We, we vibed out, bro. I'm in, completely and utterly enjoying my night at this point, man. And Pierre stay up there for about it's like or later on in the night now. It's like closer to one. Pierre still up there. They let some 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 girls up, mind you. Like if you've been in Houston in general, you know it's plenty of bad females, but you notice know also succubus, succubi that truly want to drain your energy. Like they real life like heifers. <laughs> That's the easiest way to describe them. Four or five of them will walk up and you already know what type of time they on. I doubt they even really know who Pierre was, bro. Like, oh, a famous dude. If they was trying to take a picture with the wrong nigga at first, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? They had no, you know what I'm saying? So it was, once I seen that, I said, yeah, I want no parts. I'm going to exit stage left. And that's exactly what I did. Walked down, got to chopping over my homies again. And I'm talking to girls. Like, oh, I seen you on stage. And, bro, I ain't going to lie. That shit was a crazy thing. <laughs> Like that was a crazy feeling, bro. Like, yeah, cool. I ain't gonna lie. I'm, I'm definitely abusing my power with a female bad. I'm definitely grabbing the ground, grabbing the number, etc. Doing my thug nizzle, bro. Just chopping it up with the homies. We having a great night, bro. They playing hella bangers, like hella bangers. They turn on no stylist by the story lonely. We singing that mug word for word, standing in the section, bro. Singing that song word for word, standing. In the, make a no stop. Man, turn, bro. What you talking about, bro? Two T. If you. Side note, bro, if you be in the club and you be on the walls, what is wrong with you? Like, get up and dance, G. Like, turn up. Talk to females, bro. It's a club. Like, don't be on your phone walking around. This is just dry or the vibe not there. Like, I've done that some nights where I'm not talking to nobody. But tonight, at least, <laughs> this night, nah, the club was too turned. I was with too many of my other guys. The females was looking too good. The woman was looking great. And at this point, I'm really just in my volume shooter bag, bro. Because when I look to my right, Bad dark skin joint, butterfly locks. Oh, I look to my left, light skin joint, natural hair pull back is blind. I look farther to my left, bad age joint, got that yump on the back. I look more to my left, it go a red head joint. I look, look behind me, it's an Arab joint. She look great. I'm like, oh my god, I love this city. <laughs> Bro, I'm, what? Pretty woman all around me. So what am I doing? I'm how you doing? 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 Oh, she don't want me, nigga. Man, we me and volume shooting, bro. Volume shooting. Around like 1:30, I see Pierre and his people walking out. Mind you, I'm in the middle of the dance floor, so I gotta kind of like walk a little fast to get to bro. So, cause I'm like, I, I want to at least say something to him before the show is over. Can't pussy out now. So I walk. You know what I'm saying, walk over there, get over there fast. Shout out Ali Reza, cause the back door is closing. Um, as they walking back And as he sees me Out of the corner of his eye and Opens the door back up And says The way it motions me To come in Real nigga bro For real Shout out Ali Reza So I remember walking back To where they were Which was behind the building Coincidentally Right next to the car 
the we had parked and the curly drove like they parked right next to us in the back. All right, so boom. He dabs Ali Reza up one last time, gives me a fist bump, gives the owner a fist bump, and they start walking. And Ali Reza literally says, if you want to go talk to him and get a picture, like, now's the time. Nigga looks at me, and he walks inside. I remember standing outside for 20 seconds kind of frozen because, bro, I don't know if I express this enough, but I don't, I'm not going to fan it over many other artists. But I've Pierre's, Pierre's music literally got me through a tough time in my life. Like, T-Lop 1, 1, 2, and 3 genuinely got me through eighth to like that and Uzi songs and some older stuff that that gen genuinely got me through like late middle school to early high school so seeing him in person was awe inspiring like it struck me so I definitely froze like for real because we not in the club no more we outside I'm looking at it, bro so by 20 seconds I'm standing there I ain't finna make it longer than that because I look weird and I chicken out at first bro I ain't gonna lie I walk back inside and as I'm walking back inside the door is closing the Asian worker closed it and he look at me he's like yeah, I'm about to lock this door. Go outside. You inside, you outside. And I feel like that was God telling me again, like, give me another chance. You sure you finna walk in back in here without saying nothing? After, I couldn't chance that again, bro. Like, mm -mm. I don't believe the coincidence. As soon as he said that, bro, I said, nah, finna, finna kill the doubt. Walk right back outside. Walk right over to him. And I look at the security and I'm like, uh, I look at the security and I'm like, hey, bro, uh, can I talk to Pierre? And he like, nah, Pierre don't want to talk to nobody. I said, hey, I'm going to do what they perform, open up for him, yada, yada. Some of his homeboys said, oh, this is the nigga to open up. He fire. So that caught his attention. So he kind of peeped over, did a little nod, said, what's up, bro? My, he go back to, uh, I think he was either rolling gas, texting, whatever he was doing, bro. And the security says again, like, nah, Pierre not talking to nobody. I said, hey, for sure, I ain't going to force it. And I just look back and I'm like, hey, bro, T-Lop 1 got me through a, through a tough time, got me through a breakup. And bro looks up, like, from what he was doing and pushes past his side and says, hey, bro, I appreciate that. Moves past the security, give me some more depth, and we start having a conversation. And it's not even about advice about music. It's literally me asking him questions about songs and what inspired feelings. How did this come about? Where were you when this happened? What is, like, literally just asking general questions and it turned into a conversation about life. I'm kind of mad I didn't record it, but at the same time, being present in that conversation it's more important to me whether or not he remembers it than anything, bro. I know that I have the talent. At this point, it's up to branding and marketing and a little bit of luck for me to get to where I need to go. So I didn't even want to ask for advice. All I left him with was, you're going to see me soon. I'm coming for y'all. He just looked at me like, kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, what you mean by that? But when he kind of clicked in his head what I meant, and he kind of understood like, oh, he's trying to come for the spot. Like, he just shook his head. He's like, I'm going to hold you to that. Whether or not he remembers this conversation, I don't know. But I promise you, I'll bring it up to him when I meet him again and we're working together. But um, I ask for the picture. We get one last dap and I get a peace sign. And as I'm walking back in, my heart drops from out my, my heart comes back from out my ass. Like, because I guarantee you, when I walked over there and security was trying to hold me, I was like, oh, because security was big. So I'm thinking they finna body slap me against the whip and some more shit. <laughs> well, the conversation go good, bro. And I'm definitely gonna hold on to that convo in my heart. Like, that put a different, that whole, this whole experience put a different type of battery in my back, bro. Like, it showed me just how close, like I said earlier, to the top that I am. Like, if, if people that are around somebody that's producing that and making that caliber of music are like, nah, this nigga's fire. Like, we were like, nah, we heard, bro, he's tough, he's tough. And they listen to Pierre and unreleased whatever Pierre's, for whatever artist Pierre's working with all day long. Oh, no, nah, bro. They, they, come on now. To the point where Pierre's like recognizing their taste. And they, he's like, okay, for sure. Want a conversation with the kid? Like, it lets me know just how close I am getting to where I need to be. Like, I'm, 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 no, I'm at a point now. I know I'm rambling and I'm not even on the story no more, but I'm at a point now where I'm no longer chasing the things that I want. I'm allowing them to come to me and I'm working in a format that allows them to come to me. And things like this, while they are. While they are a treat to meet people like this, it's also a it's also a motivator. Yeah, it was cool to meet Pierre and it's something I can strike off my strike off my checklist, but it's also something that's motivating me to go harder because I got to see just how close I am, bro. I'm like right there to getting to where I need to be. So I walk back in after the convo feeling like that dude. Me and the homies chopping it up and shit. It's like 150 now, everybody's leaving, like I said. Me and the homies chopping it up. 
And in my mint brain, I'm like, I, like I said, I can't leave off the night on this, on this, like this. Like, yeah, I got the conversation with Pierre. That's a W. I got to perform and some of Pierre's homeboys saw it. That's a W. But I got to hit me a buzzer beater, bro. Got to hit me a last second buzzer beater, bro. I'm feeling like Kyrie in the finals right now. It's game seven. I got to shoot one last time. And as we're leaving, Clay has stairs that go down to the dance floor and the selections and back up to the to the bars. As we leave and walking up these stairs, I look to my left, fine light skin joint, braids, body crazy, face on 10. Mm, looking great. Mind you, I've definitely been looking at her for a majority of the night. And she's been looking at me like I've been, you know what I'm saying? You know when females like looking at you, they don't want you to know. So really I've been through my peripheral like staring at me or I'm or I'm standing somewhere. When I'm walking back to where my homeboys are out of VIP, I'm standing there. She'll walk past, walk past again, walk past, walk past again, accidentally bump into me. So I'm like, I'm knowing what she on, but I'm playing my role. I can see a lot of niggas talking to a shooting at her, so I'm playing my role. But when we come up those stairs as we leaving, mind you, I got to hit this shot, bro. She by herself. She walking back from the bar. I peep her. Soon as she, soon as she see me, she staring as she walks towards me. She start walking slower and just looking at me. I can't not look at her now, bro. Since we being bold, we gotta be bold together, baby. <laughs> we can be bold together, baby. You feel me? So I'm, I'm looking back. She looking. As soon as we get to, as soon as we get by her right here, she stop me. She. I've been looking at you all night. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know you have. I ain't finna tell you vice versa, but trust me. I know. I've been beeping. The energy is there. We finna act on this. So we get to chopping it up. Just having a cool conversation. It's a basic game. You feel me? Basic game. How you doing? Where you from? Et cetera. Cool, 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 cool. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? I'll put your number on my phone. Okay, for sure. Still chopping it up. What you doing after this? You know what I'm saying? We get into the nitty gritty. As we talking, a friend come out the restroom. And this creep ass, creep ass old head, bum rushing, he drunk, get to talking to her, trying to fill on her, with some old shit. Ladies, when you go to the club, make sure you bring some protection with you, please. She creeping in some motion. He fucked the vibe up. So she got to go play rescue. And I got, I'm trying to get some in. Eh, so I got to go play rescue too. So we eventually get bro to leave her alone and some old shit. He trying his luck for real, bro. So bad to when we at walk outside, he see we leaving with him and he feel away. So he trying to cock block. Now the, the hoes start going off on the nigga. So we ain't even got to do much. She eventually just asks like, y'all take niggas back. Y'all take me and my homegirl back. So I'm like, all right, bet. <laughs> Curly such a real nigga. He dropped me back to shorty B&B. I'm just playing my role. Whole time. Her friend was supposed to slide with my boy Andre. Like, she wanted my boy Andre. Since he rolled in another whip, she thought he wasn't coming. So, he slid back to the... He slid early, later, later on. But she, when we got back to the b and I'm with Shorty. She, I'm with my Shorty. Other Shorty feeling, uh... I'm saying left out and sad. So, she called another nigga. Bro come. Now, I'm like, damn. Andre come five minutes after that. And we like, Damn. <laughs> I ain't getting no He like damn I ain't getting no nana. Nah. Like I guess not bro Like mm. Yeah Andre being a W man so Mind you Dre brought the Yandams Cause I ain't had time To stop and buy Yandams I ain't have Yandams And I'm not finna Hit no club hoe bro I'm not hitting no club hoe Without no Yandam I'm This This bear not finna Walk in that bear trap I'm sorry I'm <laughs> I need I need a Yandam <laughs> I mean, you said you like to cuddle. I might stay and cuddle. Yeah, that's fine. I gotta go back and take Look after, look after show activities, bro. She probably got it. I said it first. She's gonna be right back. She just went downstairs to grab. She good. Say what's up. My, the footage is gonna look so weird, bro. I had camera footage from earlier mixing in with phone footage, but. Oh, I look stupid. You good? Come here, girl. Come here. Come here. Come, here. come here. come here. You was finna make a drink, but come here first. I want to, but you want me to be in that video. Mm hmm. Introduce yourself. No. <laughs> we probably got to the B&B &B 20 minutes before Andre. We get there. A friend go outside. They rolling. She rolling gas. Um, with the other nigga, she brought whatever nigga she invited. They outside smoking, whatever. So me and my girl inside playing cards. Andre come, saying bring the hypnotic, get the drink in the hypnotic. 
Now we playing cards and Django. Mind you, we playing these board games. Nigga, I'm losing on purpose trying to get these games over with because I got a whole other game in another room that needs starting. Maybe, uh, uh, fuck these card games. We playing Jenga. I'm, my bad. Not going to towel over on purpose. Trying to speed the process up. What are we doing? I don't care about Jenga <laughs> at all. <laughs> like, at all, bro. So it gets to a point where everybody laughing, chilling, etc. You feel me? We all catching the vibe. And Drake kind of get the sense that he knows it's finna go down. So, bro, pass me the yondums. She look at me and she's like, can you not be so obvious with what's about to happen? Like, nigga, I'm such a dickhead. I take the condom and shake that shit in her face and walk back to the room. What you mean? What you mean? Now, let's not be so obvious. No. <laughs> I walk back to the room. Her friend, bro. Niggas, niggas be on the same wavelength at certain points in life. I don't know what it be. As soon as I do that, bro, I hear the screen door open. Her friend coming back inside with her man. You know what I'm saying? They walking back in. So, shit. Andre said, I'm just going to catch the couch. I knew exactly what he I knew he was finna jet off and leave, bro. Like, you not he, the nigga not finna stay just two niggas in here getting buns and you just on the couch. Hell no. Nah. But she say you finna get on the couch as soon as we go in the rooms. Bro takes me, I'm finna jet off, bro. I'll catch you in the morning. Exactly what bro do. He head out. You know what I'm saying? So me and Shorty in the room and I ain't finna get graphic. The only thing I'ma say is Shorty hit me with the probably an hour in. Mind you, I'm drunk. So when I'm drunk, bro, I be dry humping off the lick. Like, no bullshit. I, I be dry humping off the lick. I'm humping and got her legs on top of Shorty's head. And I hear a like a clicking noise. Bro, she stopped. She ah, apparently like she just got in a car accident. And I done removed her hip a certain way. It done cricked. So now she in pain. I'm like, oh, shit. What's finna go down? I gotta help her out like she a granny out the room so she can get some pills. She take the pills. I'm thinking we finna get right back to it. But she take them pills, drink some water, and K the fuck oh, go straight to bed. Um scratching my head all sad because she done got hers. And I'm sitting here looking like a literal L after I done took one meat, meat on gold, just straight up cover, just pointing out the covers. It's laying on my back like, well. <laughs> Can't do much Mind you We didn't start helping till 4 The situation where the hip didn't occur To like 5.20 It was 5.26 Cause I remember walking outside To give her the pills And she was in the 5.26 We walked back in She fell asleep by 5.35 From 5.35 To 8 We both sleeping Really from 6 to 8 I'm sleeping So I barely get any sleep I wake up Hangover Super hangover Worse than that Meat throbbing. I got morning wood and blue balls, but my shit crazy. She start doing a little thing. Females doing. You know what I'm saying, hey, she tune that back a little bit. Boy, round two instantly start. Thirty minutes in the round two, the same thing happened. Mind you, I'm crunching that shit from the back this time. So I'm thinking, okay, we finna last a little bit longer, bro. She hit me with the. I can't see. What? You can't what? So now in my head, I'm thinking, is it big trash? Like, <laughs> cause what, bro? You, you can't see. Like, I'm so confused. Cause, what do you mean you can't see? Like, <laughs> think not that good. Why are you exaggerating? I kid you not, bro. She says I can't see it. Like, tells me to stop. When a female tell me to stop, bro, I'm going to stop. Like, I'm. I'm not finna keep going. When I hear stop, I stop. That's the end of it. I'm not finna continue with that. So, you know what I'm saying? I do my thug nizzle. Get off her. Still don't get no nut. She got another one off. And I roll back over in the bed. Just laid there till like 9 or 10. 10 30, really. Got up, put my clothes back on. They got to leave the BNB by 11. We leave in the BNB. And. I want to check the temperature real quick, right? I got to see where she at. Because you got to know where you stand with somebody after y'all after y'all smash. You feel me? You can't just... if you if it's, Especially if it's a one-night stand, for real. I met you at the club. I could go either way if I rock somebody's shit. Like, sex is sex, bro. But after that is what's important to me. Like, are we finna connect any deeper than this? Or is this it? Because if it's it, for sure. Like, I'm finna, move on with my, I'm finna move on with my life. But if it's something deeper, then it's something deeper. You feel me? If we walking downstairs, and as we walking, like... 
me and her chopping it up. She's still on. She's still on some. She really acting like my girl at this point. I ain't gonna lie. Like she getting clingy, like holding on to me as we walking down, like on me to pick up and shit, like I did while we was. Uh, I'm saying so. We cooling, and as we get closer to a car, like I tell her, like, hey, let me check your phone real quick, whatever. I want to see something. So I texted her from my phone real quick while I had her phone in my hand, and I see that my number and I say, that's not a red flag. It's a one night stand. You probably just didn't remember to say my number. It's whatever. I don't have her number saved. But we texted last night, like back and forth, probably like five or six messages. So I'm really trying to see that you delete my number. Sure enough, I go to her messages. When I see, when I texted her, hey, it was a new message. Like I never texted her, meaning that you took the time to delete the thread with me. Yikes, either you got a nigga or you planned on never seeing me again. With that being said, I played my role immediately. Said, oh, for sure, I'm finna save my phone. Got the smile and some orange shit playing into it. Uh, gave saved her number or whatever cool 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 she saved my number um or she thought that I saved her number I remember we get down cause we had to get in her car to drive down to the gate to get out and my Uber was already out there so I get out of the car she's trying to get her she give me a goodbye hug give her a goodbye kiss whatever cool we holding on to it and she say let me see your phone so she check it she say oh my number didn't say let me save it again I say for sure she do the same thing I say but surely for surely like it's good me and you etc like I'm playing it all playing it off all cool I kid you not bro as I'm getting that last goodbye hug she kissed me on the cheek behind her back I'm swiping left to delete her shit stank face on like do not care give her a hug smile again get back in her Uber and go about my day you tried to dub me <laughs> no I'm out of there. What? She planned on never talking to me again, bro. I'm, I, I'm finna play my role. Like, it is what it is, bro. That's cool. Like, I just needed to know for surely. But it was it was still a great way to end off that night. I ain't gonna lie, because the Cuddy was... I ain't gonna lie. The Cuddy was okay. The Cuddy was not... Yeah, the Cuddy was okay. Yeah, the Cuddy was okay.